Hello, it's John Heaton. Today I'm going to do another list. I hope you guys are, are not bored of these endless lists I'm doing. I just quite enjoy doing it. And I was given this idea by um, a writer for Rolling Stone called Rob Sheffield, who the other day came up with his top 100 solo Beatles songs. Uh, so I thought, well, there's a challenge I can't resist. Um, and as, as always, you know, he had some interesting choices which didn't make my list. Um, he even had Pure Smokey from George Harrison in the top 10, which I thought was very interesting. And he related some, some amusing stories, including the fact that he's been a champion of Ringo's second solo album, Bo Coops of Blues, for most of his life. And he defends it to everyone, including at one time defending it to Ringo himself. And he wasn't sure whether Ringo agreed with him or not because he was too busy laughing at him. <laughs> Ringo was laughing at um, Rob Sheffield, that is, not the other way around. So I thought that was most amusing. And if I ever meet Ringo, I'll probably launch a similar defense for one of his obscure solo albums. But anyway, um, so I, mean, I had a go. I, I just did the numbers from one to 100 on, on a draft and filled them in kind of not really attempting to do an order apart from the, the top few, I suppose. And I feel I managed to fill it up pretty quickly. And actually, I noticed there was a lot of stuff I'd missed out, which I didn't have room for. So 100, it may seem like a lot, but I could have come up with 150 easy, um, if not more. Uh, I found that I had duplicated a, a song on a couple of occasions, so I corrected that. And I found out I'd missed certain songs inexplicably and so I had to uh, decide which ones to drop and insert the essential ones um, and some of the ones I admitted originally were some of my favorites so uh, it was all a bit embarrassing but anyway I, I thought I'd divide the video into four segments because if I, if I list a hundred songs it's going to take forever so I'm going to do in this video I'm going to do 76 to 100 but just before I start I forgot to mention at the start I was very saddened to hear of the death of Carl Wallinger the lead singer of World Party and um, immense talent uh, I love his albums particularly the second and third one um, Goodbye Jumbo and Bang but I've, I listened to quite a lot of it this morning I was going to do a video but I'm, I'm going to sort of reacquaint myself with all of his catalogue before I do a video I think I was listening to a lot of archaeology this morning. It's just kind of lots of outtakes and B-sides. Very interesting. So very sad, only age 66. And he was formerly with um, the Waterboys, of course. Although he strangely didn't sing any vocals or write any songs for that band. He was just uh, an instrumentalist. And also, around about the same, within a day of Carl, um, we learnt the, the sad death of Eric Carmen. Uh, lead singer of the Raspberries and went on to have a successful solo career. So it was, it's sad that all these people are dying, you know, within a short space of each other. And um, he was a bit older than Carl. I think he was in his mid-70s, 74, something like that. But uh, not, not too old these days. Um, so very sad. Um, anyway, on to the video. So before I start the listing, I just want to say that I end, I'll, without giving too much away, I ended up picking... Out of the hundred, eight, and the most album I picked songs from was, I'm not going to say which one, but there were eight songs from one album, seven songs from the second most popular album, six songs from three and four, and five songs from five and six. I think there were just two albums with five songs, yeah. And then a whole bunch of them with four songs. And then a whole bunch of them with three songs and, and a few with two and a few with one. So I'll, maybe at the end I'll list you the top most popular albums. But um, as I say, I had to leave out. I, I won't tell you all the songs I left out, but including one was Ballroom Dancing. And I had to leave that out because I realized I, I admitted one of my favorite songs. So I had to get rid of one of the hundred. And that was the one which unfortunately... I deleted. Uh, Deliver Your Children is a Denny Lane song co-written with Paul, which nearly made the list. New York City, from sometime New York City, didn't, didn't quite make the list, but easily could have done. So, at number 100, we've got George Harrison's single, 
1975 single U. And by the way, apologies, if you watch my channel, you'll know that uh, my solo Beatles preferences are a little bit subjective, should we say, and based on what I grew up with and what I remember fondly and all that. So don't be too harsh and don't be too upset if you don't agree. It's fine. It's just, just my opinion and it's not definitive or anything. Um, but I do have a, a pretty heavy bias towards the first 10 years of the solo career. So you'll see that. Anyway, number, number 100 is You from George Harrison. Very catchy song. And uh, it's a little bit high in high register for him to sing, but he does a decent job, and uh, I, li I like the instrumental instrumentation. And it's a very lively track, um, and it's pretty much easily the, the best track on Extra Texture, in my opinion. Um, number ninety nine, Little Lamb Dragonfly from Red Rose Speedway. Um, originally, I didn't have anything from Red Rose Speedway on the list, even though it's one of my favourite albums. So I thought, bloody hell. And then, so this is the one I picked in the end. Um, not to give away that there's nothing else from that album. Sorry to give that away. Um, um, but anyway, it, I think it's a beautiful song and is probably my favourite from the album. I just think he's on fire m melody wise. And it's a very touching lyric as well. Number 98 is my favourite. One of my favourites from Dark Horse, the second track on side one, Simply Shady, uh, with his very personal lyric about reflecting the sort of troubled time in his personal life. I've always been an admirer of that. Number 97, we've got quite an obscure track from Ringo. Well, not that obscure, it was a single and did get to the top 30 in America. Uh, Dose of Rock and Roll, the lead off track from Rota Graveur. I think it's it did actually make the Ringo the best of, the photograph compilation on the CD, but if you look online and on Spotify, it's, it's been deleted <laughs> and he's inserted some other song in, in its place and he's deleted Hey Baby as well, but that's another story. I love the song, um, Peter Frampton plays the solo, guitar solo. Number 96, we've got Silly Love Songs from Wings. And although I haven't, I've haven't, heard this song a hell of a lot over the years, I just think it's a piece of magic. And yeah, it's a little bit defensive. You know, he's answering the critics who, who complain that he just writes silly love songs. But he answers them in superb fashion with a very sort of au courant song for the time, 76. Kind of nice, funky beat and lovely bass line. Um, and uh, just just a great melody and a, and, a, and a heartfelt sentiment. And Bruce Springsteen, I think, is on record saying he, did, he really didn't get that song at the time. But then when he had a family later on, he said to Paul, Lee and I really get it. So I thought that was a good comment from Bruce. Number 95, we've got the second track from Ringo's self-titled album, 73, Have You Seen My Baby, this superb cover of Randy Newman's song um, with the brilliant piano solo and the, and the brilliant guitar solo from Mark Bolan. And um, Ringo sings it really well, and I love the lithograph from Klaus Vormann to illustrate this song with, with Ringo looking out the window and his wife with the milkman. It's hilarious. Um, number 94, we've got It's So Hard from John Lennon from Imagine. Uh, I could have picked New York City in, in its place here, but I, I just think It's So Hard works really well. If you turn this one up loud, and the strings are really nice... Uh, accompaniment to the sort of rocking song and uh, I think it's although it was recorded a couple of months before the rest of the album I think around about the same time as Power to the People so it's got I think it's got Jim Gordon on on drums as opposed to uh, um, Alan White um, anyway so that's a great song from Imagine 93 whatever gets you through the night from John um, again I've heard this song a hell of a lot over the years but I still think it's infectious and um, it wins me over every time I listen to it. And another one, good, good to put it up loud. Uh, I, li I like the words, don't need a sword to cut through flowers, don't need a gun to blow your mind, don't need a watch to waste your time. Very clever words and very uplifting lyrics in, in, on the whole. I love it. Number 92, that, now this is a track which a lot of people say is a bit of a weak link on All Things Must Pass, but I absolutely love it. And it's the opener to, on side four, I Dig Love. Very simple opening on the piano with the bass notes of the piano and then he comes in with the chorus and then there's a, a good middle eight and there's a good guitar solo and uh, I just think this song is superb. I did have a couple of other songs from side four on the list originally but they 
they got dropped in the end because I had to insert some of the stuff I'd forgotten. So that was 92, I Dig Love from All Things From the Past, 1970. 91, we've got Let Him In from Wings at Speed of Sound, the second selection from that album, the opening track. And uh, yeah, it's very simple, uh, but it's very effective. And it's a great one to play live and uh, seen him play it live quite a few times. And uh, I, you know, I love the sentiment. He's just inviting all of his family and friends to come and have a party and open the door, let him in. I uh, love everything about the song and, number, and very good production and band performance from Wings on that song. Number 90, we've got the first selection from self-titled George Harrison album um, from 79, which is, as you know, it's one of my favourites. So it's a superb, lovely love song to Olivia. Never get tired of that. Number 89, we've got Lipstick Traces, a cover song by Ringo on the Bad Boy album from 78. I just love it from the opening pounding piano from Dr. John um, into the, the very catchy verse and chorus. I think it's probably my favourite track on the whole album of that Bad Boy album. Number 88, we've got a selection from Wildlife. Wing's first album from 71, Some People Never Know. I've chosen the opening track from side two. I mean, it does go on a minute too long. That's the only criticism I would have. But other than that, it's a beautiful melody and a heartfelt lyri lyric about him and Linda together sharing things and love it. 87, now this is one I missed out originally because I was thinking I wasn't going to include live versions, but I have succumbed and I've put Venus and Mars Rock Show, the live version from Wings of America, the studio version wouldn't make the cut, but when they do it live, I think they really do it justice and it's just a superb opener to the 75, 76 world tour. Um, brilliant, and it's on the video rock show, of course. Uh, number 86, another selection from self-titled George 79, Love Comes to Everyone, the opening track, uplifting, very optimistic lyrics, but none the worse for that. Lovely guitar, lovely melody, lovely keyboard work from Steve Winwood. I love everything about that track, it's great. Number 85, a track from one of my favourite solo albums, as you guys probably know, London Town. So I've chosen Don't Let It Bring You Down from side two. I think it's just absolutely superb and shows Paul demonstrating the, the range of his vocal repertoire from the falsetto down to the, the bass notes, uh, very well illustrated on this song and lovely tune co-written with Danny Lane, that one. 84, we've got Wah Wah, the third track from All Things Must Pass, very good track, crank this one up loud. Some people don't go for the wall of sound, but I think it's damn effective on this one. And uh, the, we all know the history of this song that he left the Beatles in, on the 10th of January. 69 went home and wrote this song. Well, even if, if that was the inspiration for it, then good things come out of a sad situation and this was a good song. Number 83, we've got a selection from McCartney's first solo album, Junk. And there's so many great tracks on McCartney. Um, and this is just another effortlessly, effortless little number which was actually demoed at Isha for the White Album but didn't make the cut. Um, uh, lovely melody, nice words. Number 82, we've got the title track, Bound on the Run. I couldn't leave this out, even though I have played it to death over the years. Uh, been reinvigorated um, on that album with the recent reissue with the uh, the rough mixes. And uh, it's just a piece of genius, whichever way you look at it, even if it is overplayed, it's just a masterpiece. Probably should be higher on the list. Number 81, I've got Loser's Lounge from Ringo from Bo Coops of Blues. So Rob Sheffield will be happy. I think he put it in his list as well, I seem to remember. In fact, I'm sure he did. Um, very up-tempo, country and western song, fast guitar work, great. 80, George Harrison, 1976, Woman, Why Don't You Cry, Woman, Don't You Cry For Me, the opening track on 33 and the third, lovely musicianship, Alvin Taylor on the drums, Willie Week on the bass, Willie Weeks on the bass, and uh, Infectious, and, and this one was actually started off in 1970 on the All Things Must Pass sessions, but I didn't get very far with it. 79, we got Crippled Inside from John on Imagine. Yeah, it's light-hearted, it's quite humorous, but I, I think it's a good antidote between the Imagine and Jealous Guy ballads to have this kind of piece of um, fun in between and a lovely piano from Nicky Hopkins and lovely guitar from George Harrison. Uh, number 78, we've got a selection from Back to the Egg, 79 Wings album, their final album, Old Sam, Sir, my favorite track on the album. Again, crank this one up loud. I think it's, uh, it's, 
it's a, I would call it a minor masterpiece. No, I don't think it's an absolute all-time classic, but it is it is pretty damn fine. Number 77, Another Day. This was one I actually left off the list and I had to get to make room for it because it is one of my favourites. Uh, out of all the 71 sessions of of um, Paul, I think this is my favourite track, so it probably should be higher, but I, I kind of didn't want to muck around with the order that I'd come up with too much. But so, and, and as I say, the order doesn't really matter on this 100 listing. It's just, um, I just put them in more or less randomly apart from the top few. Um, so another day, lovely melody, very heartfelt words about a sort of sad song about a, a, a lonely woman, um, a bit like Eleanor Rigby in that respect. Number seven, it got slagged off at the time, of course, but with hindsight, I think people are realizing it's a pretty damn good song. And I was just reading the other day, the engineer <laughs> overdid it on the bass. And uh, when, when he heard it on the radio, he was mortified because it sounded very bass heavy on the radio. But uh, I don't think it, that matters too much. And Paul never mentioned it to the engineer, so maybe it doesn't matter. And on, on the CD player, of course, or the vinyl, it doesn't, doesn't matter either. You can, you can have a good stereo system and play it well. Um, Number 76, the final one of this 25, we've got Bluebird from Band on the Run. Lovely melody, lovely chord changes, great sax solo from Howie Casey. So this is the, the bottom 25 of my list, although, as I say, the order doesn't matter too much. And the next section, this video will be in four sections. The next section will cover uh, 51 to 75 or something like that, and then we'll do the, the top half after that. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.